Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial about Game Maker. Today's tutorial is a little bit different than the others. It's not really going to be over any code, but over how to set up your source control so that you can collaborate with team members and have your project available across multiple computers so the team can work on it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your browser of choice. Go to this website called github.com. From there, should be at this page. If not, click the little symbol of this cat octopus looking thing. I just click it. Don't question what it is. <laughs> click the setup git button. You're going to want to download for your operating system. You're going to save that file. Should download really quick. I'm going to run that file. What you're going to do is you're going to install this onto your computer. Let's just take a second. Now, while that downloads, what you can do is go back to your other site and you want to create an account. It's probably somewhere up to the right. I'm already into my account here. But as you sign up for GitHub, you're, you're going to want to do that. Every member of your team needs to have a GitHub account. Okay, I'm going to let that finish now. You have multiple ways about going about creating a it's called a repository for your project. First way is you can click the create repository button here. Now GitHub has is free, but that means anyone in the world is allowed to look at your project. You can choose who edits your project, but anyone can look at it. Here we just finished installing that the GitHub client. This this is going to make things a lot easier for you because after that's installed, you can just click create one. It will make your repository. Now choose location that you want it in. I'm going to put mine somewhere where I like it. I'm going to name it tutorials because I'll be storing my tutorial projects in here. And description is, you can leave that blank. We don't actually, we don't need a description. Um, keeping the code private does require you to pay monthly. Um, for most people, the cheapest option is $7 a month. That gives you five project repositories. Um, if you're a small indie company, you're not working on many projects, you're probably only going to be working on maybe one project. I would recommend either that or the free version because ultimately, not to be offensive to you, but no one's going to care about your code and want to steal it. So if you have a public GitHub, the free version, where only, only your team can commit to it and make changes, you should be okay. But as you become successful, it may be in your interest to actually purchase that $7 a month upgrade so you can have your code hidden from the public and only for your team. But it's not really, it's not really an issue. So already I have repository created. Now there are some, I'll show you what I did here. So you double click it, it'll take you into your repository. This is the files that are available to your team. To make changes, it's called committing a changes. As you can see, I have two uncommitted files, git attributes and git ignore. If you click the down arrow, it shows you what's, what those files are. These, for the most part, are just files that GitHub uses. You, you may or may not actually need them as you, it's just, but, for the sake of things, you can just 
keep them in this is what really makes this useful when you commit a change you can describe what it is that you changed so here I'm saying I created a repo nothing fancy empty repository once you're done describing what you changed after days of work a day of work or after you got a major accomplishment done you click this commit to master now that pushes that into the main server if you go back online here go to your account you should be able to click your name your account name and as you can see that repository I just created shows up here not only that I can go into it go into it now and getting ahead of myself sorry guys okay I have to publish it. Make sure that you do. Pu you have to click the publish button. That'll actually create your repo on the server. Finalize it. Sync up your files. Now I shouldn't be so so lost on here. So as you can see, what happened now is we have the created repository that we already. It already knew that we were trying to create one, but now it's finished. And right here, you can see that I create. I added a contribution on the 25th of 2013. That's today. I can click on that and it shows me who made that commit. So you know who's adding what to your repository and when. If I click on that, it'll take me actually to the commit that I made. And it says created a repo. repo. It says that who did it, what I did, I authored it. And it will let me go and see what actually was done. So as you can see, I added two files to this repository. The get attributes and get ignore. Click on those, it shows you exactly what they are. So it's pretty nice. Now you want to get YoYo Game Maker situated so that it works with it. It doesn't get much easier than clicking new, finding a repository, and naming your project. You don't even don't you don't even need to check the use source control. You just create, save it, close it. I head over here, uncommitted changes. Boom! There's my game maker project ready to be put into the repository so that everyone in your team can see it. And then you commit that change, boom, sync it with the server. Go check online. Here we go, source control. Project I just made has all of the platforms, has everything, all of your project stored right there. Now, what you want to do is now you want to add your teammates, team members, into the project so that they can actually work on it. So you want to go to your settings. You want to ignore whoever that is. Now, manage collaborators. In that settings, you went down to collaborators. Add a friend. I, I don't have any friends, guys. I'm sorry. But <laughs> what you would do is you would type in their name as you can see people show up you would just choose your actual team members here so it's pretty simple after you chose your person click on their name you click add they can now work on the project after they accept them some things on their end other than that You want to go to your options here and restrict edits to collaborators only. You can choose to have or not have wikis, but 
it's not gonna really change anything. But if you don't restrict this, anyone anyone is able to edit your project files, and you don't want that. So restrict it to collaborators only. And that's it. As you can see, here's the game files. They're all committed up to the server. And from here, you have all of your code. So anything that is changed from any of your team members, the other team members can go in when they load, their, load the project. They have all of those changes saved on their computer now. And if at any time you wish to undo certain changes, something was broken, so to say, or you're, un you're not satisfied with what happened, you can just go back to your tutorials. You can find the latest commit that broke your project. You can say, this is what broke it. You can see exactly what was put into it. It's just a really nice tool to be able to see what's happening with your project. Even if you're not working as a team, this is just a great way to back up your project and keep it secure and really just help your development process a ton. So hopefully that helps you set up your own repositories. If you have any questions, ask. I'll do my best to try and explain the repositories or any other similar questions. Or if you have a tutorial you would like to see made, Put it in the comments. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time. Thank you.